see. Uh, hey, there she is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's much better. It You're not is? Okay. Because I, oh. I see, I so usually good. do all of these on my phone. Ah. I've got my laptop. My, I have such raggedy, whatever. It's fine. Right here. <laughs> so right here. I was just explaining to people, someone messaged uh, to me about the vibrato. Mm -hmm. and, it, and they wanted an explanation about the vibrato. And so I was talking about how the vocal cords oscillate, kind of like a fan. They don't yeah. spin, but they kind of make a motion kind of like this, right? And so when someone has a slow vibrato, it means that there's not enough air traveling through the cords. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. when someone has a fast vibrato, for instance, like Jesse Smollett, right? Mm -hmm. The vibrato is very, very fast. It, it, it's, it's because... The air is moving too fast through the You mean like a billy goat? Like yeah, well, well the Italians call that caprino, right? It means oh. a little goat, right? And so what one wants to do is learn how to take that, the vibrato, and to slow it down when it's going too fast yeah. so that you learn how to even out the voice. Because no one's vibrato should be fast or slow. It should be right in the middle. That's the goal, yeah. right? Um, so someone was also saying while we were trying to get you back, I'm so glad you're back, that wow. um, your explanation of the squall was so informative and amazing. And I thought the same thing because I, you know, having grown up in the church myself and been around a lot of singers, I had no idea how people did it. Karen Clark does it all the time. All and the time. I had no idea how they were creating their sound because not something I necessarily aspired to do. So yeah. it was nothing I would ever even try. But the way you explained it was fantastic. I mean, you know, inside the singer's voice. Hello. Come on. Come on. So let me let me ask you this. What's the greatest lesson you've ever learned as a singer? Oh my God, that's a good one. Uh, oh God, I don't, oh my God, I don't know. Um, well, what I'm learning now is I feel like as I'm getting older, my voice is getting better. Wow, how so? I, I, I mean, I remember singing, I, this always happened to me. I would sing and I would always think I can sing higher than that. I would always think this, mm -hmm. but I never knew how. I didn't, not that I didn't have the tools, but I just didn't understand my voice, how to reach these notes. But when I stopped drinking the, remember you used to always say, Kim, you have a mix. And I didn't understand what the hell the mix was. Uh -huh. I never, Jeremiah, my mix. I don't know where she came from. I know where she came from. Right. Being <laughs> hydrated. <laughs> I just, I just, I feel like I just haven't reached my fullest potential vocally. I just feel like I, there's so much more for me to tap into. So as I'm getting older, when I would hear people talk about people's voices getting rusty and as they get, as they age, it's changing. But I just find that when I was younger, I felt that I was just shredding my voice. I didn't know what I was doing with my voice. I was always hoarse. I didn't know how to sing properly. I was just in a, in a choir squalling and and sounding a mess. <laughs> a mess. A hot, Jeremiah, a hot mess. So let's talk about something. You said the mixed voice. Can you describe to me what mixed voice singing is to you now that you know what it is, now that you're doing it, now that you're doing it, what is it? Tell us what your mix is. That voice, you know when they say your chest voice and then your head voice, it's that voice right in between there that um, I think is the healthiest part of the voice to use. Oh, yeah? You think so? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> so. So explain to us. So you just talked about how it's the chest and the head voice coming together. The yes. merging of the two. That's the mixed mm -hmm. voice. Tell us what it feels like. Again, I got to go back to feeling because I think a lot of people associate singing with the wrong kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. When they associate singing, they, they associate singing with pressure and pushing. Right. What you're describing is a different feeling. Can you tell me what that feeling is? It feels really effortless. Mm. When I, because I still go in between like that gut butt bucket balls to the wall type thing. I still do that. Mm -hmm. But when I found been when I'm at home singing and I found my mix, it feels like it's so easy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like hard singing, like ah, that can be like a lot. Like I right. be exhausted. It's yeah. tiresome sometimes. Absolutely. I can be worn out. Absolutely. You know, singing a whole song, <laughs> balls to the walls. Yeah. Like, ah, like that is that's a lot. That's a marathon. But the mix feels like it's like the easy balance. It's like 
if all else fails, that mix is the savior. Like sure. that's it. That's the place. So when you mix your voice, do you feel you can sing all night long? Yes. It's very comfortable. Can you still sing with the same sense of girth, but without necessarily the muscular production? Yes, but it's not as heavy as it is when I'm when I'm just blue singing, liquor, juke joint singing. Right. It ain't as heavy, but the impact, the anointing is still there. So let know? me ask you this. So Aretha Franklin, I think she's saying balls to the walls a lot. Do you think that she was singing from a mix or from her muscle? She was singing from her mix. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know that song? We talked about this song one time. Um, Sometimes it hurts too much, too bad. When she's hitting all those notes, that's mixed. Yeah. It hurts like hell. But she was singing like that till she died. Yes, that's right. Aretha that's was still that Kennedy Center with the fur coat. That's right. Riri was still in the mix. That's correct. That's correct. So I think, you know, it's, it's a good conversation because mix singing, <clears throat> excuse me, mix singing is something that I think people don't recognize. They think I'm singing in my head voice. But what we know about the head voice is it's very light, so it has no power, right? right. But yeah. a singer needs to learn how to discover their mixed voice because it is the very tool that will give them the longevity, right? Uh -huh. So if you listen to like Shaka Khan, Shaka sounds better than ever. Why? Because yep. she's singing with her mixed voice. Yeah. Anita Baker, mixed voice, right? Oh, Anita, yes, yes. It's, it's yeah. all mixed singing. Uh, Luther yeah. was a mixed singer. Luther sang yeah. in his mix, you know. Uh, John, Donnie Hathaway sang in his mix. Yeah. Yeah, Layla Hathaway sings in her mix. Yeah. <laughs> Lettuce sings in her mix, right? Yes. Yeah, those are all mixed. Cheryl voices. Pepsi Riley. Cheryl all Pepsi all Riley, right? Yes. It's all Karen Clark. Yes. You know, they're all singing in that mix, which is why their voices are so reliable all the uh -huh. time, right? So I always encourage singers who either come with me, work with me, or, you know, want to, you know, get some information. It's like, you have to discover how to sing in that mixed placement of your voice. Right. And that is going to save you night after night after night after night. Absolutely. Yes. So tell me, what was your first career break? God. <laughs> uh I would say probably like nine years ago when I performed on the BET Awards yes. for their Music Matters segment. Yes. It seems so long ago, but it was that was very much a very defining point in my journey. Uh -huh. Like for Stephen Hill and Kelly G, all them guys to really like believe in me. And then, you know, I was just this black girl talking about I sing rock wearing tutus. I had this horrible orange tutu on for the <laughs> performance. Um, but it was really a defining, it was a milestone. I, you know, I, I reflect, thank God for this time of lockdown because I've been really able to sit and reflect on my journey. And I've really had some very like, they seem far and few, few in between, but every major thing that happens in my career be is usually like some badass shit. Like, epic. Yes, I agree. Epic. I so agree. I'm like, well, God, if every five or so years you have some epic and it's it's monumental, I'm fine with that instead yeah. of being one hit wonder. Yeah, you know? absolutely, absolutely, so, absolutely. That was definitely, that was. I think that was where I was like, all right, girl, you you some gonna happen with your career. So let me ask you this: when you are getting ready for a performance, let's talk about the day of a performance. What's your routine? I sleep all day. You sleep all day. But when you get ready to perform, what is your routine? What is your vocal routine the day of a performance? Well, I kind of use, like, my favorite part of getting ready for a performance is the makeup part. Uh -huh. And that's kind of my meditation. And that's when I do my breath work and, and, and playing around with notes and stuff and warming up. And, and depending on how my voice feels, is as, is as hard as I go and run. Um, so how, how, how do you warm up? So can you tell me some of oh. <laughs> That sounds quite sassy. <laughs> oh, so number one, before I even, while, I, while I'm doing my makeup, I see how my voice is and how I know if my voice is jacked is if I don't have any A's. So I go, ooh, A. If I don't have that, I know how far I have to go with warming up. Okay. Which is random, but if I have no A's, I know, girl, 
some some. So when you say a, what does that mean? Are you talking about vowels? The vowel a. Oh, okay. A a a e a e i that. If I don't have any a's, I know I'm hoarse because I can do i o u's all day. But if I have no a's, some I need to work on her. Okay, so you talk about vowels. What do vowels mean for you as a singer? What do they mean? Do you know what? What they mean for me is since I was a child, the vowel sounds have always been a go-to for warming up. Whether wow. it was the, whether it was like the amateur church folk saying A-E-I-O-U, you know, whether it was that or whether coming to you and us doing vowel sounds from the most amateur to the most professional route I've gone with vocal training, it, the vowels have always been the constant thing, the constant go-to in my training. So, and it's and to me, it's tried and true, especially for me, that when I go to those things, they actually work. work. Me working on these sounds, the vowels, they actually work with me warming up and moving, trying to move phlegm around if it needs to be pushed left, mm-hmm. right, back mm-hmm. to the side, front. So do you find that you're actually saying the vowel or are you making a sound of the vowel? Because that's it's too more, different. It's more of a sound. Okay. Okay. Because I think, hmm, sounds, I think, require a little bit more air than actually just talking. Like, right now, I feel like I'm, right now, I'm talking just in a normal level of how I talk. But when you're producing sounds, I feel like there's more air behind sounds. Okay. So would you say that when babies are crying, are they making vowel sounds? No, they're just making sounds. They're hollering. Okay, okay, okay. So let I me. I really heard my nephew crying, my nephew. <laughs> and he's squalling. I mean, ah, ah, he's saying ah. Let me ask you this: When you inhale, is your throat round or square? Mm. Round. Okay. Okay. I feel like she's round. Okay. It's not a trick question. Some people may feel it in a square way and you feel it as a round way. I also feel it in a very round way, almost open. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like an opening, like she's letting in. So, you know, you've been in the business for a long time now. You've been in the industry. You've been in meetings with labels. You've been with managers, producers, et cetera, et cetera. Is the voice, the reason I ask you this, because people who are not singers tend to use this verbiage. And I want to ask you this. Is the voice a muscle? The vocal cords are a muscle. Are they? Hmm. Mm, they're not a muscle. They're two little folds of of very thin, fragile strips of something. Tissue. Tissue. Yes. They're not, they're not yes. muscle. They're not Ever. muscle. Should no. you be using muscle or do you think you use muscle when you sing? No. I will say, when I'm out of shape and I sing, I... I'm a little bit more winded. Uh huh. Uh huh. So I think body strength is important to singing. But, but do you body. feel what? What the most dangerous word I find in the business is the word diaphragm. Can you tell me about diaphragm? That's some bullshit. <laughs> Right, right. So tell me more about that. It's breathing, Jeremiah. It's breathing. When I realized, and even, this is the thing, even when you're growing up singing in choirs and you think you're listening to these motherfuckers talking about diaphragm, you're just breathing. It's air. Yeah, yeah. You're like, big breath. Ah, That's air. It's a balloon. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. I don't even, when I'm singing, I don't even think about a diaphragm anymore. When you talk, do you think about your diaphragm? No, I'm just talking. 
I, you know, the reason I like to bring it up is because when you have these meetings and these conversations with people, they're always talking about, you know, you got to tell the singer how to use a diaphragm. And they I'm don't like, know what the fuck they're talking about. Exactly. Exactly. They ain't never saying a day in their life. They ain't never been on nobody's stage. Nobody's listening to them sing. They don't know what they're talking about. So I like to tell singers when they come see me after having those meetings that a diaphragm is for two things, laughing and crapping. That's it. It's the only time you know that it's active, yes. right? After that, it's doing its own thing. I'm sure it has some function within the process if you get very te technical. Right. But I think a singer needs to, to not think about so much. There's already so much to think about, right? We have to think about our inhalation, about our release, about uh, the, the, the words, right? The, the, the performance, yeah. right? So if you start hankering down on muscle, you become muscular when you sing, right? Right, yes. So, uh, I, let me talk to you about, um, we talked about if you sing heavy or light. So again, you think that overall when you're singing, what's the feeling? Is it heavy or is it light? Hmm. I think now that I'm finding this new, this untapped area of my voice, it's starting to feel a little lighter. And it all depends on what I want, I'm going for. Like I'm noticing that I have op more options now. Like I have my mix, I'm a little better with my head voice and I have that gut bucket, heavy balls to the wall. When I wanna sing that way, I can. But if I'm like, okay, this is a moment for my mix, I, can I have options now. So what I like to remain in now is in that lighter, easy breezy place, which is the mix to me. So now do you, what are your thoughts on singing softly? Is singing softly and singing loud, do they come from the same place? Yeah, they do. Beautiful. But singing, I've sang loud for so long, sometimes singing lighter, softer is a little bit more work for me. Uh huh. But it, I, it comes from the same place. But now, I love that you said that because again, I think people, when they associate singing softly, they all, almost feel like they need to constrict something or they need to pull something back in order to give a softer sound. But they are right. literally coming from the same place. It's about how you're directing the breath within that space, would you say? Absolutely, yes. Do you breathe through your nose or your throat? <laughs> or your mouth, I should say. Do you breathe through your nose or through your mouth? I, my nose. Oh, really? Okay. You find that you get a really great breath through your nose. I inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. That's, okay. Me. Okay. That's what I think. Okay. And when I'm doing it, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Something to rec you know, something to, to play around with when you're when you're singing, yeah. you know. You know, it's obviously it's working. working. It's obviously working. Yes. Um I know you love your voice. Is there anything you wish you could do better? Yes, I want, I want, I wish I could hit higher notes in my head voice. Sometimes I don't know. I was listening to Order My Steps by mm -hmm. the Mighty Clouds of Joy. Mm -hmm. And there's this note the lead singer keeps hitting. I can't hit it. Mm. Hmm. And he's in his head voice. And I'm like, why well, can't I can't? I don't know why I can't hit it. I can And you know what? I know I can't hit it because when I'm in my mind, I'm like, I can't hit it. Part of it is the my mind. voice won't go there. I think part of it is the mind, but some of it is the approach, right? I think next time you're listening to that particular song and you want to approach that high note, I want to encourage you to breathe where the pitch is. Mm-hmm. Mm. I want you to inhale the pitch. When you get ready to sing the pitch, I want you to inhale the pitch and release from that inhalation. I haven't tried that. Okay. And put a lot of teeth on it. Let's see what happens. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tell me about <laughs> your vocal inspiration. So you talked about Tina, you talked about Nina, and you talked about um, um. your mom. What did you get from each one of them? Um, mm. my mom, she was, she was just like always like to me, like where 
she was very, she was, a, she's a great singer, an exceptional singer, beautiful tone, but she always knew who I should reference when it came to like my voice. I remember her telling me, you need to listen to Gladys Knight. And I really didn't understand what that meant. Mm -hmm. She's like, you need to listen to Gladys Knight. Then she would say, you need to listen to Whitney so you can understand mix. She was talking about mix. And like the, she was talking about this when I was a kid. I was like, what the hell mommy talking about? She was talking about this when I was a child about mm -hmm. how Whitney so seamlessly went from, um, what is it? the mix to the head or the from the whatever to what she was seamless with it was one voice and my mom would always say you need to listen to whitney for that she so she mommy in it in addition to just her being just a, a just my inspiration and watching her sing and how she was poised and she was all oh, she's such a great performer on stage she always knew who to show me who to listen to even oh, sade she's oh. like you need to listen to sade She's like, Shada ain't no joke. Y'all be think she down there singing in the bottom. That woman be uh, way up there too. Yes. Um, Tina, one thing I, when I think about Tina, I just love her so much. People don't talk about how great of a singer Tina is. Mm -hmm. And Tina would say her inspirations were Mahalia Jackson and Rosetta Tharp. Wow. Like she would talk about these profound vocalists, um, in our early years of shaping of early contemporary music and nobody's talking, all people think about Tina is the girls, the legs, giving full shows and squalling. But Tina is an exceptional vocalist. When you listen to her, Tina's range is out of this world. Mm -hmm. And there's she has versatility in her voice. Mm. Um, and I sit and listen to her and I'm like in awe of how great of a singer she is and how much people don't even know it. Right. Because right. she's such a big performer. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of like that random, like Beyonce, like people can't even get into the fact that Beyonce really can sing, but she's such a, it's so much happening that his hair is pyro and dancing and flying around right. and right. ass cheeks. Right. And people are like, forget the bitch actually really can sing. Right. But, um, Nina, Nina. Uh, she's just, Nina's like a storyteller. She's just like a griot when she sings. It's like she's a, she taps into the soul and the spirit of songs and she articulates what the song is vocally. Yes, I, that's called text painting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She yes. is a master at text painting. Master. There's yes. things, the way she forms her words. And I'm like, I remember this, I don't know why I won't ever let this go. This had to be like nine or 10 years ago on, on Twitter, this guy named Torre that everybody knows, he had the nerve to say some shit. I remember this shit, it pissed me off. He said, yeah, you know, Mary J. Blige is a lot like Nina Simone, not a great singer, but um, many people still love her because she just, her soul resonates. And I messaged him, I mean, I've responded to his tweet. I said, people that study the voice would tell you that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Right. Nina's the most masterful vocalist master I, I mean i will never let that go because i was like what the fuck are you talking about nina yeah. can't sing yeah, what are you talking? yeah. so uh, you know yeah nina is a she is a master class and song styling yes i agree i mean she was one of my also one of my biggest influences and I learned how to create pictures with my voice yes. because of what she did yes absolutely I Absolutely. think, and I think about Nina, and then I think about like Nat King Cole, like how oh. they're painting pictures. Yes, like it's yes. not even; it don't need all that glitz and all. You know, all the pomp and circumstance black singers can really be known for. Right. They don't got all that. Well, let, let's talk about that. You know, right now, what are your thoughts on? Would you say that singers now sing differently? No. Meaning, think, meaning from the past versus now, do you find that singers are singing differently? Do you find I, that the approach to singing is different than it was in the past? I think it's a continuation of what past singers did, but it's more of an overcompensation, over-exaggeration. Like I was thinking, listening to, 
I was listening to Ashford and Simpson. I was even like, even I've been going in the crates listening to James Cleveland and, and stuff. I'm just really tapping into the archives of our, our, our template of Black American music. Yes. And all of these people were running and doing all this intricate shit that we do now back then. Right. I, now there's an overcompensation like running is now a mainstream thing. I remember being on The Voice and the shit used to irritate the hell out of me when people with white kids on The Voice would just keep talking about, oh my God, the runs. Oh my God, the runs. I'm like, who gives a fuck? Like it was just so, I had never in my life heard anyone talk about running that much. What, 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 what we know is that runs used to be used as a way to ornament to make an expression in singing, but now it's become the go-to thing, right? Yeah. But my, my, my feeling is that as a watch singers or when people come see me, it's like, make me feel something. Yeah, I don't care about that. Like, yeah. you know, okay. You <laughs> and with your finger going like this. Uh, like there's a bone in your fingertip. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what is that finger doing? <laughs> well, <Yeah. you> know. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to bust the baby's balls too much, but I kind of like, okay, baby, that's all that's great. You can run. That's that's fine, but you sound like you're copying. It sounds like yes. you're copycatting now. Yes, as Nova, someone just wrote. Nova just said that uh, Jackie Wilson was ripping the down, 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 down. You hear me? This is down. nothing new. Black yeah. people been running. Okay, yeah. Yeah. they were running when the first records were recorded with the big yeah. um, gramophone. Yes. you know we've been doing yeah. moving yeah. our voice like that. Yeah. Uh, girl, Go back to Africa. They were yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. That, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Let me ask you this. So when you are singing and you descend, meaning you're going down in your voice from the top down, or if you're ascending, going from the bottom up, do you mm -hmm. find that there's a change in your throat as you're ascending or descending? Mm. Yes. Because I feel like it's easier for me to start from the bottom going up because my bottom is where I'm most comfortable. Okay. Um, so when I'm ascending, I believe that my voice may become a little, I don't know what the word I want to use, tighter in forming the sound. Slimmer might be a good word. Slimmer, yes, yeah, slimmer. To get the higher sound out. So, do you find that it's? Do you think that it slims a bit and then opens up again, or does yeah, like when it find when it rests well with it and it it and it sitting there? I think it opens up better. Yes. So, would you say that's like an hourglass, maybe? Yeah. Uh huh. When yes, she the bottom. She's all she's good and full. Then she's working her way up, finding it, and she's. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So let me ask you this. Um, what sacrifices have you made as a singer or for your voice? That's the better question. What are the sacrifices that you've made for your voice? Mm. I think definitely when preparing for shows, not talking on the phone, that's a sacrifice. Is it? Yeah. It could be. It can be a sacrifice, definitely. Even I think about sometimes with my friends, the last time, last year when I did the Apollo Theater, I had best friends in town that wanted to see me before my show. Uh huh. I sacrificed seeing them before my show. They wanted to do brunch. I couldn't, I said, I can't. And I text them, I'm not talking um resting i mean and i think this might not sound like a sacrifice but i think i'm such a social person and like cocktails is such was such a thing for me uh -huh. that i kind of let it go and sacrifice that that social aspect of my life is just not beneficial mm -hmm. so yeah i think those are some things so let me ask you about this have you ever suffered from stage fright Yes, all the time. And, okay, all the time. So how do you remedy that as a professional singer? Hmm. I just, I just, I think I'm so used to just going out and doing it. I just do it. And, you know, I kind of, I've 
I surrender. I mm. surrender to the moment. And, you know, when you get past that first initial butterflies and fear, it, it feels, it's like, here we go. The train is moving. Mm. Yeah. And um, have you ever faced a vocal crisis? And if so, how did you remedy it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I have faced the vocal crisis. Um, I think that first one, first ever in my life, when I first came to you in 2012, when I had no voice, uh -huh. how I remedied it, it remedied, remedied it. Um, I, I mean, I couldn't sing all weekend and I rested mm -hmm. um, and hydrated. Mm -hmm. and didn't eat late at night, then lay down. So you, so do you suffer from acid reflux? I don't like to say I suffer from it. Sometimes I eat certain foods and my acids start doing cartwheels. <laughs> Somersaults and rock it up yes. to my esophagus. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So <laughs> what, do, what do you do what, for, for acid reflux? Outside of changing the fact that you don't eat late if you can or avoid certain things, are there other things that you do to avoid having acid reflux? I mean, definitely I, I can't drink coffee. I can't eat heavy meals. Um, I apple cider vinegar like there's no tomorrow. Okay. What do you <laughs> love about your voice, Kimberly Nicole? Oh, um, I like the tone of my voice. I feel like I have a very, that not even without any of the high notes or, you know, squalling and riffing, I just have, a. I think the foundation of my voice is very beautiful and I like the sound of it. <laughs> Beautiful. That's important. You know, I think once, especially when you know your instrument well, it's a great thing to indulge it in. Is. It it's is. It's like impressive. Yes. I'll be in here singing and Hendrix be like, I'm like, bitch, I'm singing and that's motherfucker. Huh? Fuck you. You know what I mean? Girl, fuck you, Hendrix. I'll be in Jeremiah. I'll be in here singing my ass off. You so for those who <laughs> dust. So for those who don't know Kimberly Nicole, she has a dog called Hendrix after Jimi Hendrix. And that's who she's referring to right and now. And she over there asleep right now. I'm talking about her. The crazy dog, the hell. Hendrix. What, what advice do you have for singers? I'm sure people come up to you all the time after your shows and they, they, they want to be singers. They, they, they aspire to be like you. What advice do you have for singers? Um... Man, this might be this. I don't know. Just keep singing. Sing, 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 sing whenever you can. I remember I was talking about my 20s and just being so scared to become 30. Like, mm -hmm. I was so scared. And I was like, my, fuck my 20s. There were nothing. But I was like, I'm not going to say my best years have been my 30s, but my 20s. I had such a fearlessness in me. I sang everything. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Drop it a dime. Opening up an envelope. I sang, sang. I was scared. I would get up in front of anybody and I would sing. See, and it and it helped really groom and shape me and helped me to really understand my voice and like set me up, set my career up. So mm -hmm. just sing, sing everywhere. Sing. Do not have any restrictions. And to me, I don't like this. I never was a girl about being uppity and bougie about when I would sing and where I would sing. Mm -hmm. Shut the fuck up. Don't nobody know you. Right. Sing, 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 everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Do you know how much I sang so much for free early on? Mm -hmm. I mean, sing. Don't be like, yeah. what? And then, hey, do, just do it. Don't be like, I need a manager. No, you don't. I need a record deal. No, you don't. No, you mm -hmm. don't. Because uh -huh. you're never going to get it. And if you get a manager, he ain't going to be shit. Just do it. Sing because you love to sing. Period. And anything else that comes is just icing on the cake. Absolutely. And it, when you put in the work and you just tell God you just love to sing and you just surrender to the gift rather than being uh, uppity and structured, uh -huh. it all fall, just opens up for you. Let me ask you this question. Answer this for me. To be fully present with your voice means what? Mm. That I am, <laughs> I am in good spirits and in, in my sober mind. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, answer this for me. 
What does the word break mean to you? Um, sleeping. Also, if we're talking about the voice. Yes, oh the voice. The voice. Hmm. It means when there is something restricting the producing of sound mm -hmm. in a seamless manner. That's a break to me. In an age where people are sharing so much, what is the one thing you keep for yourself? Hmm. Wow, that's a good question. Oh my God, wow. Oh. I think what I hold on for myself is really my very personal dreams and aspirations for my life. Yeah. Keep that to yourself. Yes. <laughs> Before you and God alone. Yes. That's a great thing to do. Yes. And so my last question for you is, Kimberly Nicole, this is years from now. This is 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. You have made your mark. What do you want people to say about you? Mm. Uh, that Kimberly Nicole was bold, brave, and brilliant. Wonderful. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're all of those things for sure. <laughs> Thank for you. sure, yeah. for sure. 